Hello everyone, this is Mr. Robert Ronan here, and today I'm here for a breakdown on Shoto Todoroki. Um, I definitely say Shoto is very uh, similar to his Once Justice One self. He hasn't really changed that much at all. He's still the really great character that has really awesome screen control with all of his ice moves that have huge hitboxes and uh, long active frames. So you can have massive control of these screens, the massive ice walls you can make. You have great movement with this. And obviously you have great zoning with the fireball, which I'm sure you've experienced playing on that. Anyways, getting into his buttons, his regular attack string is a forfeiting attack string that you can dash cancel at any point. And as you can see, his air attack string is practically the exact same. It's a forfeiting attack string that ends with a kick, and you can dash cancel at any point. Okay. His armor attacks, just like the, his air attacks, are the same on the ground as in the air. He does two swipes of fire, and you can combo into them and out of them. So you can combo into it and cancel a quirk button after it. So in the air, you'd usually be doing three attacks into the armor attack, into some other quirk attacks to do good damage from the air. His red attack is a really good red attack. It's quite fast, and the best thing is it has really good range and a really good hitbox. That whole ice area counts as the um, the hit area of it, so it's really good. Sometimes if they sidestep or try to walk out of the way, it'll still hit them. So it's really good at that, even though I think that's a bit overpowered. And he can use it if he's like hiding behind his ice walls that he puts up. If you're standing over here, then they can't see you. You can jump out behind them. And yeah, basically, and um, throw out his red attack because they're not going to be able to see you starting it up. So they'll be cautious when they're standing near these, and then you can just hit him with your red attack while they can't see you. So it's a really good red attack, and obviously you can get combos up. Um, okay, his quirk one is this ice stomp. It makes this really large chunk of ice on, on top of the opponent, you can combo into it. And you can also hold the button down to extend it to go really long, or you can release it early to make it end a bit before it hits the opponent, and then it'll stay around for a bit longer. So then you'll have this large amount of ice just on the screen, and if the opponent walks into it, or touches it in any way, then they're gonna get hit, so if I put Bakugo on return to center here, he should touch the ice, and then if I was a bit faster there, I would have actually gotten a combo. Um, this move is what you can cancel from it from his other ice attack, and you can dash cancel from it to extend into some of his best combos. So, it's a really good move, and it has really long active frames, which means, so see if I do that, he's on the ground. If I just have him fall to the ground, like, after I do this, and it's sitting here, it's active that whole time, so if Bakugo moves, like he did just then, he'll get hit by the ice. So if they touch that thing and it's whole time being there, they're gonna get hit by the ice, and so it's a really good setup tool sometimes if they're on the ground, he moves slightly, I get to go in for a combo, and if he just tries to stand there and block, obviously I can go in for my red attack then, and get lots of easy damage. So it's a really good move for controlling what your opponent can do. They, they don't have many options off of when they're in this, it's really scary for them. Um, in the air, his quirk one is his fireball, but I'm sure you've seen a lot of people spamming online. It can do up to five hits, I think. Oh yeah, it can do a few hits, it just depends on what angle he throws it at. It's better if the opponent's slightly above him, like after the three attacks of this attack string. There it does the most damage, it does about like, this is 2000. So it does about 2500 on its own or a bit more than that. So it, it does a lot of damage, but if you hit them like from above, sometimes it only does like 1,700 or something, because they just slam into the floor. And as you were seeing just before, it's also really good for getting wall splats, so you can end your combos with it, in hopes of getting a wall splat to go in for some easy wall splat damage. His tilt quirk one can only be done on the ground. If you do it in the air, it'll just do the fireball. 
But the Tilburg one is essentially the same as this. It's practically the same move, except you can hold it down. And instead of just, like, projectiling it at the opponent, you'll slide along on it. Which is a really good movement tool. You can choose which angle you go at if I want to go to the left and curve around, or go to the right and go straight ahead. It's, it's a really good move for mobility, and after it he can cancel into his flames. And if the if you see the opponent get some um, like touches any of the fire, you can go in and attack them and you'll usually get a combo off of it. So I can show you kind of what that looks like here, yeah, this is exactly it. It's to pretend he just ran into it, so I've been able to go in and get a combo really easily from it. So it's really good uh, control and if you see them get hit, then they've made a mistake and you can get a combo or you can just throw a fireball to just try and control their movement even more. So yeah, that's a really good move. His quirk 2 is this ice wall that he puts up. It has a huge hitbox and surrounds him pretty well, except for around the back, obviously. So people can run around and attack you from the back, but it's really good. The only thing that can get through this is like some projectiles can go straight through. But most projectiles even get blocked by this, or at least um, like they nullify each other. So it's a really good move, and it does a lot of damage, 3000, and it's also a really good wall splat move. For some reason. It doesn't look like it's going to be, because like, it's just an ice wall, but it's a really good move, so you can get easy damage, so if you ever see that you're facing a wall when you're on the ground, just end your combo with that, and you have an easy wall splat. Very easy damage. Um, this move is used in most of his combos, because you can cancel his quirk 2 into his quirk 1, which does a lot of damage on its own, and if you do it in a combo, that should, if you dash cancel, it's a damaging way of getting damage. <laughs> yeah, damaging way of getting damage. And that's what you're going to use in most of his BMDs. Um, this move can also be charged if you hold the Quirk 2 button. So see, he goes blue, and now it's charged. And if it hits when he's in charged, it hits twice, and does a bit more damage, but... The main thing is that you can get a combo off of it for free. So if I do three hits into it, it can be quite tight sometimes. You have to really like mash the button or time it well. Oh my goodness. Sorry. Oh my good uh, last try. But essentially you can get combos off of it. You can just go into your normal attack string. Why can't I hit this? That's ridiculous. I was hitting this easy peasy before. Usually it has a really easy needless combo after it. Okay, this is really embarrassing. There we go. And that allows you to get a lot more damaging combos. See, it does 11,000 damage, which is better than the 9,000 he usually gets. And if this doesn't have to be charged like by holding down once you've done this button. You can cancel it by like doing it in the air, or if you're in recovery frames from something else. Like if you've done a fireball, you can charge it up. So if I go, and then I'm holding down B in the recovery animation, I've got a charge and ready. So you can basically always have that ready. And it still has the same properties as the other one. It'll just do a bit more damage and have the option of being a leaderless combo launcher. Uh, if you don't fail while recording like me. His tilt quirk too is this other move where he like grabs you, freezes you, and then hits you with some fire. This is just like an ultimate combo extender. You can cancel it into the quirk one just like the other one. It's just, you know, if you want to switch it up, not be doing the same things, you can go with that. It does about the same damage. Combo wise is the other one. It just, you know, is switching it up. I haven't found anything too useful with it. I don't think it's safe on block. I'll just check that. This is how you check if something's safe, by the way. Yeah, so it's very unsafe. And it. Hello? Yeah, okay, both hits are very unsafe. 
don't really see what the point is. It's just an interesting combo starter he can use. Don't do that. Don't do that. So yeah. You can come on to this. Just get some other flashy combos in. Okay, now that we've done all of his buttons, we can go into his combos. So, Todoroki... I'll add setups into this section as well, because I don't think Todoroki excels at combos, because he, do he does maybe a bit below average damage, but he still gets pretty decent damage. So, a normal BNB that you're going to be doing for one dash cancel with Todoroki is going to be three attacks into the two ice moves, part two, quirk one, into the beginning of the armor move in the air. <laughs> okay, I'll try and explain that better. So, after you've done three attacks, into quirk two, quirk one, you dash cancel into three hits, into the armor move, but don't let the whole thing hit or else there'll be meteor blowed. And then after you see a few hits of this hit, just like two, then you go into, um, oh yeah, tilt quirk two in the air, guys, is this like freeze move. So you go tilt quirk two, quirk two, quirk one. And so the air segment is gonna look like this. And do pretty decent damage. And the whole combo on its own is gonna look like this. There we go. That did a bit less damage than usual. It does vary sometimes. Sometimes it does 10,000, sometimes it does. There we go. That's gonna do about 10,000. Or 9,900. Yeah, so basically 10,000. For one dash cancel, that's really good. Um, with Todoroki, uh, less is more with his combos. You can add things in, like I could have put the armor move in there, but that actually causes him to get a media blow, like a lot earlier, and then he gets far less damage than he would have if he just did a simpler combo. Like sometimes, even if you just go into this and dash cancel, you can get really, like, pretty decent damage. Even though you've simplified it, you're getting more damage. Um, if you get a combo in the air with Todoroki, you can basically go into the same thing. Just dash cancel after the fireball. Oops. Um, but make sure you cancel the, um, the armor attack a bit early before it all hits, or else it'll have an early meteor blow. And yeah, that wasn't optimal. I think you can get about 9,700. Yeah, whatever. So it's a similar way you just do the air combo twice and dash cancel after the fireball. If you get a meteor, I mean a wall splat, which is pretty common with Todoroki since he has this great move, I like to just go into the air and do his air segment of his combos. And go from there and do whatever dash cancels I want. You can get pretty easy damage that way. And that wasn't even a full combo because it was just from a raw quirk too. Um, obviously, you can do all the same combos off of his red attack. You don't mess them up. And if they get frozen, you go into practically the same thing. If you want to spend two dash cancels with Todoroki, I suggest going into... You can go quirk 2 into quirk 1, and then you dash cancel and land on the ground, and then do the same thing again. So if you go 1, 2, 3, land on the ground, 1, 2, 3, and then you go into the combo. Oops. Try that again. And there we go. And then he's getting an easy 10,500 damage, which is pretty good. So if you do two dash cancels, then you're getting above average damage, but usually you're only going to get about 9,000 or something. And sometimes if you drop it, you'll only get like 8,000. But he's still getting pretty decent damage off almost every touch, and his combos are pretty easy. Like the only, uh, the hardest thing I would say is making sure you time this. Like there, you can mess it up if you do his attack a bit late, and then they're on the ground. But this looks really cool. 
and it's pretty easy to shoot. Yeah, there I got even a bit more damage. Um, Todoroki can... You can do some extra flashy combos, because he's a lot of combo tools that work practically the same way. So I could do three hits into this, into this, and then dash cancel and get almost the same amount of damage. A bit less, but you know, if you want to be fancy, change it up. Um, you can actually get some unusual combos if you're facing a wall. You can do the whole armor attack and cancel into the quad tool because they'll bounce into them. And you can get some fancy combos that way if you want to. Also, if you're facing at the wall, you can do this meterless combo by going into the tilt quad one. And that's 9,000-ish for no dash cancel, which is pretty good. It's usually he'd only be getting something like this if he doesn't have any meter. Um, or if you have this charged, you can go into something like... Like that for no meter, and then you set up another one of these. And that's something else I want to talk about with Todoroki and his combos. A lot of the time I like to just not do a full combo and then just end in that. So then I have time to set up the other one and then they're standing inside. So inside that, so I can get an easy setup off of it. So I do three attacks to quirk two, quirk one, and then I put another quirk one, and then they're stuck inside of it. They don't block, they're gonna get hit. If they block, I do my red attack. It's a really tricky and evil setup that I like to do a lot. Um, and you can get pretty easy damage off of it. Or you could do it into that if you want as well, and if they move, then you get an air combo. He's it, very easy to do like setups with these, these ice moves. And if you have time, you could even go into something like this. But if I'm doing that, I usually like to go from this move, because then they're a bit further away. And now look at how much ice the opponent has to deal with. It's just like on the screen, there's just nothing that they can do. And so you can go in for a red attack there. So that's usually the only time I use a grounded tilt quirk too, is to set up all of this ice. That wasn't optimal at all, but it still did really good damage. So you can see my point, he's really good at setups. Um, he can also really easily... The reason I have these really basic supports is because he can super easily combo off of his plus ultra 1 with someone like Aizawa or Jiro. And get super easy damage. Yeah. And that was only 2 plus ultra meters and I think it did, what, 18,000 damage? So, it's pretty easy. And if you don't want to, like, understandably, if you don't want to spend 2 plus ultras, you can still get really good damage off of a single one, to an Aizawa. And you're getting, yeah, there, 17,000 damage for a single plus ultra into a combo using Aizawa. So he gets really good damage off of those, and that's also a reason why I like to usually end my combos with this and go for setups, because they don't actually cost me any meter. So I can save up and go for my really damaging plus ultra combos, which is unbreakable most of it if I go into the plus ultra. They can't bring out the supports when you're in a plus ultra. So yeah, and you can get really easy damage that way. And I think with all those combos gone over, that's about Todoroki in a nutshell. He really benefits from doing setups, making sure he always has lots of ice on the screen, making sure the opponent can't just run around and beat willy-nilly. Yeah, but he can also do really big damage if he wants. He can also decide to go for lower damage to set up for a reset. To go for damage later. And, or he can save his meter completely and spend the whole game storing up for doing a bunch of plus ultra ones. To go into some crazy combos. Supports when he wants. 
And I'm gonna end this combo with the plus ultra too, which is impossible usually, but I'll show you what it looks like. Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed watching. Todoroki's really fun even though people are saying he's weak. He's, I think he's really good at setups and controlling the screen. Even though he does a bit below average damage, he's a really solid character, has a really great red attack for when you have all the ice up. And yeah, he's just really fun to use, has great movement, easy combos, and a lot of combo um, freedom. He can, go, he can do all sorts of different combos if he wants. He's not restricted to always doing the same combo always. He can spend no meter, he can spend a bunch of meter. He's really free to do whatever he wants. Anyways guys, hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!